first time on TV, The Homeboys, 10.30 Friday. This is Channel 7, the number one station for news and information in Southern California. And now, Eyewitness News, recorded earlier with Jerry Dunphy, Christine Lund, Ted, Dr. George, and the Eyewitness News team. From the desert to the sea to all of Southern California, a good evening. Here's the latest at 11. More and more buildings are being converted into condominiums in Los Angeles, and that's causing a lot of problems for tenants, and now owners too, despite a new L.A. city ordinance to protect the residents. Nancy Becker has one example for us right now. Nancy? Jerry, the people now out to test the strength of that ordinance are the residents of Terra Village in Tarzana. 90% of the 168 rental units are leased by families with children. Moss & Company, which owns and manages the building, wants city council approval to convert it to condominiums. But before it can do that, Moss must offer to relocate those families with children. It must suggest buildings nearby with similar sized units, amenities, and with comparable rents to that which they now pay at Terra Village. The ordinance doesn't really define the area, and uh, we will be polling our tenants to see what areas they would consider uh, suitable to meet their family's needs. Uh, does it worry you that you don't know how big that radius is? Yes, it does worry us because uh, a lot of families here, for a lot of reasons, couldn't move, let's say, to North Hollywood or couldn't move eight miles away. Many people um, do work in this vicinity. They use public transportation. They might also use special education facilities in the area or go to some of the, let's say, Pierce College and use public transportation to get there. And all that would be interrupted if they had to move out of the area. The ordinance also says that you have to be relocated somewhere with comparable rent. Yes. Do you know what comparable rent means? Well, we're very worried about that, too, since we are protected here under the rent control ordinance. Also, our gas and water is included in our rent at Tara Village, and uh, that covers our air conditioning and our heat and hot water. And if we were to move someplace else, we might wind up paying a lot of money on electricity for our, util uh, our heat, hot water, and air conditioning, and that could up our rent considerably also. The residents of Terra Village think that the city's conversion ordinance will keep their building from going condo, but because of its ambiguous wording, they aren't sure. Councilwoman Joy Pikus is with us tonight. She represents those folks in Tarzana. Councilwoman, um, how about it? Is that ordinance tough enough to keep the building from going condo? I think it very well may be. It really is designed to protect the people in this kind of a situation. It says that if over 50% of the units are occupied by seniors, handicapped, or people with dependent children, then the owners, the, the applicants, need to provide a relocation plan. The city can stop a big money firm from doing that? If they can come up with a relocation plan that the city and the council determines is adequate, then they can go ahead with the conversion. But if they don't come up with an adequate relocation plan, then it can be stopped. Those tenants asked me to get a commitment from you tonight on whether or not you support Councilman Joel Wack's uh, proposal that there be a one-year moratorium on condo conversions. Do you? I haven't seen enough of the information and the pros and cons regarding the moratorium. I think that this condo conversion can probably be stopped without needing a moratorium. We're seeing how it works. This week, Councilman Yaroslavsky on the west side uh, got a commitment from an owner in his area on a really fantastic relocation plan. And I would like to use those same uh, techniques that he used and the same recommendations in this case, too. And I think the people will either be happy or we won't be able to convert. <laughs> Thank you. The question of Terra Village comes before the city's advisory agency on May 22nd, and a lot of people are anxious to see how that case is decided. Chris? Okay, and, I, and so many more questions we'd love to ask. We can't, uh, oh, we don't have time, but uh, thank well, you very uh, much for being here. We another hour. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That is They're one complicated issue. <laughs> Thanks so much. Seems uh, a lot of people in the Los Angeles area are starting to get worried about a possible shortage, not just of places to live, but of gasoline. Many are topping off their tanks regularly instead of waiting until they really need gas to, for a fill-up. A union oil company spokesman confirms the practice calls it a premature panic situation that's putting an extra drain on gasoline supplies, and they're limited right now. An oil industry newsletter says companies are supplying their stations with about 9% less gasoline than the retailers are demanding, and that if that trend continues, more and more stations are going to be closing. Drivers will have to line up at the ones that are still open, and that's when the beginnings of a crisis can occur, whether it's real or not, we can create one. 
The Southern California Rapid Transit District is expecting a sizable increase in riders if all the talk of a gas shortage turns out to be true. The district has been working for some time to switch over to a grid system for better service. And tonight it got a reaction to that idea from people in West Los Angeles. Larry Carroll was there for the whole thing. He listened, he saw, he can tell us what it's all about now. Well, it's hoped, Christine, that this new plan is going to cure the mess we've come to know as the RTD by next year. But if the idea is to get people out of their cars, the cure itself may be fatal. U.S. Transportation Secretary Brock Adams said today that a 10% increase in ridership would clog the mass transit system with riders. RTD planners don't entirely disagree. The system is overloaded on some lines, especially Wilshire and Hollywood boulevards. And one of the reasons is because some of the system is strained. Some of the routes don't go through it parallel so that people can have perhaps maybe three or four alternatives to get from Wilshire Center to UCLA or to Santa Monica. We figure we can accommodate maybe 10% more ridership under the present system. The proposed system should be able to allow a lot more people to travel, and that's why we think this is necessary. It just makes sense to me, though, that on a main thoroughfare that runs in our city from the beach all the way to downtown, that there should be a through bus that continues on that street. The night's tough questions came from residents of West L.A., considered among the more intense RTD users. The meeting was the first of 17 designed to get public reaction and input to the RTD's plan to revamp. It tries to simplify the system. One line, one street. A basic grid in the urban area with a lot of freeway services. We create 200 new route miles in the West area, in the North Los Angeles area. And hopefully it'll make it more comprehensible, not only to the present rider, but to that person that cannot use the bus now because it takes too many transfers or it takes way too long. Most seem fairly pleased with the revisions presented tonight. If you would like to get a copy of the new plan or make suggestions of your own, RTD Planning would be very happy to hear from you. The number is 972-6219. That's 972-6219. And the deadline for comment is June 1st. Jerry. All right, thank you. A couple of big questions facing Californians tonight. Uh, one might be, when will Californians get to vote on the constitutional amendment to ban busing for school desegregation? Once they do, then what happens? The Assembly made it pretty certain the referendum will be held when it passed the measure by a vote of 62 to 17, eight more votes than were needed. Senator Allen Robbins was in the gallery for that vote. It's his bill. The Senate is expected to go along with some changes in the measure. When the public will vote, that's one. That's set for 1980, but Robbins and others are pushing for a referendum this summer. Even if it passes, the amendment is going to be challenged. We know that now. Ramona Ripston of the ACLU reacted to today's assembly vote on Eyewitness News tonight at 5 this way. Well, I think we'll go into court to attempt to have it declared unconstitutional. I think also this makes the state a party to segregation, to segregating the schools here in Los Angeles. We don't feel that it will hold up. If people in Los Angeles think that they are going to stop integration of the schools with this measure, they're making a big mistake. Uh, the school district has been found guilty of de jure segregation, of deliberate acts, and I think that the courts will eventually uh, uphold us. Ms. Ripson seems to think that the issue is not forced busing, but rather that people don't want all kinds of children going to school together. Meanwhile, the proposed metropolitan busing plan will be closely monitored by a law firm hired by a number of local school districts. Three Orange County school districts today join the 28 districts already involved in the effort, each district kicking in $1,000 to pay the legal expenses involved. The three new members of the group are districts in Newport Beach, Irvine, Costa Mesa, and in Fullerton. Chris. Jerry, coming up in just a second right here, the farm workers want a nationwide boycott against a major grower. And an American GI comes back home from Vietnam. Before H. Salt came along, people used to say, I hate fish. But once they ate light, tender, unfishy H. Salt fish, they ate their words. I rather like fish. Our taste made H. Salt the big fish in Southern California. And now, just about everyone says, Always did adore fish. At H. Salt. You will, too. Ate salt in California for 15 years. Popular because it doesn't taste fishy. Try it. You, too, will say, used to hate it till I ate it. Hoo, hoo. Don't throw trash in lakes and streams. That's pollution. Hi, I'm Woodsy Owl. Give a hoot. Don't pollute. Woo the Corio Health Foundation serves the oriental community of greater Los Angeles 
The foundation services include family planning, tuberculosis screening, cancer detection, teen programs, and a VD clinic. Fees are determined by one's income. To find out more about the services offered at the Corio Health Foundation, call 213-731-0686. United Farm Workers leader Cesar Chavez has announced a nationwide boycott against Chiquita brand bananas because of the ongoing lettuce strike against the parent company here. The boycott against Chiquita banana is to uh, counteract the union busting tactics that Sun Harvest is using against us, firing the people and bringing in uh, outside uh, strike breakers and uh, harassing our pickets with, uh, with uh, armed guards and so forth so that we need them to get the support from the cities to put enough pressure on that company to get him to the table and get him to negotiate a contract. Chavez says he will take his boycott campaign to the East Coast within the next 10 days. The trucking industry and the Teamsters Union are going to try again tomorrow to try to work out a new contract now that the union has rejected management's first offer. The company's proposed a 6.9% raise the first year, but the Teamsters are demanding a 14% the first year and a total of 35% over three years. Government inflation fighter uh, Alfred Kahn says that the parties agree to a 14% raise the first year. It will amount to an act of aggression against the American people, according to uh, Jimmy Carter's plan for keeping prices and wages down. Jerry. Well, the Teamsters are trying to sell that. The administration of our country is trying to sell something else. President Carter is going to give Congress his proposal for national health insurance sometime within the next few months. He's going to take it only one step at a time, he says, and the first step announced today would be government-sponsored health insurance for everybody, but only against catastrophic illness. Proposals for other areas of medical care would be made later. The cost, 10 to 15 billion dollars, but wait a minute, not until 1983. Senator Edward Kennedy called the plan piecemeal. He says he'll introduce his own health insurance bill next month. Well, now that Israel's parliament has ratified the peace treaty with Egypt, plans are going ahead full steam for a signing ceremony on Monday in Washington. Both Prime Minister Begin and President Sadat are expected to arrive over the weekend. Channel 7 is going to carry the ceremony live and direct Monday at 11 o'clock. If you're interested, there it is. A lot of people interested in this. A Marine Corps private who disappeared while fighting in Vietnam in 1965 is back on an American base tonight. For the first time in 13 years, PFC Robert Garwood arrived in Bangkok from Vietnam and then he was taken to Okinawa for a few days of medical checkups. The Marines have listed Garwood as a prisoner of war all this time, but someone who served with him claims he collaborated with the enemy, went over to their side after Garwood left Vietnam the day the Marines formally accused him of desertion. Garwood denies that he ever collaborated with the Vietnamese, but he refuses to make any uh, comment further on those charges. He will be brought back to the mainland for a court-martial in a few days. Jerry. And when we come back, Ted Dawson will have a preview of tomorrow night's heavyweight bouts, and Joanna Shimina will give us a quick lesson in disco roller skating. Are you ready? Miami Beach, where tropical humidity and saltwater spray can combine to make a car's vinyl top old and worn looking. Los Angeles, where corrosive smog can destroy the beauty of a vinyl top, leave it looking dull and dingy. Chicago, where vinyl tops are weather-beaten by snow, ice, and harmful road salts. Phoenix, where the hot, scorching desert sun can bleach the color and luster out of a vinyl top. Any product that protects and beautifies vinyl tops in these cities will work anywhere. That's why New Vinyl is a leader in vinyl top care and protection, with over 9 million bottles sold coast to coast. New Vinyl is not a wax. It's a clear vinyl liquid that restores luster, makes your top look showroom new. All you do is wipe new vinyl on. There's no rubbing, no buffing. You can cover the entire top of your car in just minutes. And look, we ran this car through 50 consecutive car washes. Yet in spite of all the scrubbing, harsh detergents and steam, the side treated with new vinyl still shines like new. Proof that new vinyl lasts month after month. New vinyl is great for your car's vinyl upholstery, too. Use it to protect expensive vinyl and leather-covered furniture. Restore the shine to boots, purses, and travel-worn luggage. So no matter where you live, if you want to keep your vinyl top looking new for years to come, give it the care and protection of new vinyl. Satisfaction guaranteed or return on used portion to place a purchase for full refund. Get new vinyl only at thrifty drug and discount stores. 
two cents won't do much for you nowadays, but at Federated, those two cent days are here again. It's Federated's two cent sale. Just two pennies will buy you a sure cartridge with the purchase of any turntable at our regular price, like the Morant 6025. For two cents, buy a five pack of 90 minute cassette tape plus car box with the purchase of any AM, FM, in dash cassette or eight track, like the Sanyo FT478. For two cents, you can buy a set of Pioneer headphones with the purchase of any stereo receiver, like the Onkyo 2500. Don't miss Federated's five day two cent sale. Dad Dawson, uh, you're going to tell us about uh, what? You're going to cool it. <laughs> okay. The Kings. If that's what it is, <laughs> the man. Kings right. fell asleep. That's sports uh, for tonight. Uh, incredible. <laughs> Another lackluster performance by the Kings tonight against St. Louis, one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. The Kings acted like they just didn't want it badly enough. Behind all night, the Kings did catch up late in the second period, but goalie Ron Graham gets out of position here. Mike Zook sneaks around the back of the net behind him and slips it past. St. Louis, right here, leads three to two. Now, third period, some masterful passing by the Kings. Marcel Dion gets a perfect pass, a great shot to Charlie Simmer all alone in front of the net. The Kings have tied it. It was Dion's third assist of the night, but the Kings could go no further, settling for the 3-3 tie. Also tonight, Pittsburgh moves two points ahead of the Kings with a big victory over Boston, while the Montreal Canadiens are struggling. Big win for local star Tracy Austin tonight at the $250,000 Women's Tennis Championship in New York. Tracy won 10 straight games to stun her one-time idol Chris Everett, 6-3-6-1. As we told you last night, UCLA basketball coach Gary Cunningham made it official today, announcing his resignation. But Cunningham wouldn't comment on any replacement for him. The best coach. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm not going to go out on a limb and recommend anybody. I, I think there, I think there are a lot of good, good candidates. Uh, I, I think my assistant Larry Farmer could do a great job. I think there are other people that could do a, do a great job. But, but that's that's not my uh, that's that's not for me to say because I, I'm not the athletic director. I'm not the person that's going to hire. I'm available if if anybody wants to uh, to talk to me about it. I'm certainly available. I will give I will give. Uh, uh, JD, my opinions if he asks, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, that, that's, that's not my territory. However, I've learned tonight that Larry Brown, the former Denver Nuggets coach, will be in town tomorrow to talk contract with UCLA Athletic Director JD Morgan. Brown has been offered the job and has told friends that he wants it. Now, the only thing that could blow the deal is UCLA being unwilling to pay Brown enough money, but that's not likely. In pro basketball action tonight, just two games, Seattle moves two and a half games in front of the Lakers, and Indiana edge past Cleveland. Dodger pitcher Andy Messersmith got tagged for five runs today, and a three-run Dodger rally in the final two innings fell short as the guys in blue fell to Atlanta five to four. In Tucson, Angel designated hitter Joe Rudy went four for four as the Angels triggered the Cleveland Indians eight to four. The Angels scored four in the ninth to win it. Elsewhere tonight, Larry Holmes, the World Boxing Council heavyweight champion, talked with Lynn Swan today about how he plans to fight challenger Ozzy Ocasio in tomorrow night's championship fight here on Channel 7. I think if I knock him out in before five rounds, that's just another feather in my hat. And if I don't knock him out before five rounds, just think, that man went ten rounds and beat the man, Jimmy Young, who beat George Foreman, who beat Ron Lau, who gave Kenny Norton fifth, controversial decision with Muhammad Ali and this man Joseph Ocasio come up and beat this man Jimmy Young so I don't think uh, I would look bad either way I go. Let me tell you something Larry Holmes is the best heavyweight in the world right now that's sports. Chris? Give it a minute hey. <laughs> Please don't do it I can't take it. I can't take the tension Jerry and Ted have got a thing going. It makes me nervous. I'm going to tell you about something. It's tame, fun, listen, and just settle down, you two. This is a disco uh, dancing and roller skating craze, something completely new. And these two things are coming together in a hot new entertainment form these days. It is called disco roller skating. And in Downey tonight, Joanna Shamina got a sample at a benefit skate o -rama. Here's her report right now. They called it a roller extravaganza party, and it was complete with roller dance and disco entertainment showing off some of the latest fashions in the roller skating world. There was couple dancing and group dancing. Even the kids joined in too. Then all the guests who paid $5 admission to get in took to the floor, and it was a free for all. The money raised tonight will help send a U.S. roller skating team to the Pan American Games in July, the first time roller skating has really been recognized as a competitive sport. One gentleman in Puerto Rico 
with a foresight knowing that roller skating is good for a multitude of people knew that it would be good for Puerto Rico as well as everyone else decided that we should be in the Pan American Games. Then of course yours truly had to join in the dancing. Who could resist the music and the fun? If you're not finding disco dancing very challenging, try disco roller skating. I guarantee you it's not boring. <laughs> Joanne should be in Channel 7 Eyewitness News reporting. There's Joanne rolling around out That's there with the best Joanne. of them. Don't you like that? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But it looks like the Southland is headed for a very good weekend. Dr. George will have the latest weather update when we come back. One of the most tiresome, back-breaking household chores is mopping and waxing floors. And the constant bending, stooping, and straining to wring out your mop. Well, here at last is one of the greatest work savers to come along in years. It's the fabulous Rollomatic Mop and Waxer. With this exciting built-in remote control ringer and a sponge rubber head that doesn't get hard. Rollomatic Mop and Waxer, an ideal gift, only $9.95 at all Alpha Beta markets, Safeway supermarkets, save on drugstores, Woolworth Wilco, Sears. Complete satisfaction or return to manufacturer. We Mazda dealers have just received a special new GLC model at a special low price, $36.95. It's actually less than any other import hatchback. But supplies are limited and they're going fast. You get great mileage and lots more. Come look at our GLC California specials now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twen